Hey guys, um, it's really late at night and so I'm just, I really felt like I have to record this video, um, because it's really special. Um, I know that in my last video I said that was, you know, this may be my last video, um, but this video, it was not, that was not clickbait. I really, uh, felt like the Lord was wrapping up everything that he's been teaching me for the past year in all these videos, but with this video, it's really um, an added point onto that one. And so these these last two videos are really about, it's about everything that he's been showing, but it's literally about the point of everything. And I just thought it's very funny. Um, my husband and I had this conversation where I, I talked about in my last video where he was like, you know, what is the point of all of this? What is the point of this journey? What is the point of learning all this stuff? Why does God care? Like all this, you know, information, like why is God showing it? If this is, if this is God showing it, you know, what, what's the purpose? Like we always ask these type of questions, him and I, and cause we're very analytical, like I've always said. And this is the point. These last two videos are the point. And so my last video was really about how all these patterns and, you know, this time fractal, this, um, these, like, like I've said, all, every, every dream that he has given me where he's like, he's really giving me the dream. Guys, I'm sorry. I look really tired. Um, he's really giving me the dream. It's very late. And I've told you guys where I've like seen his hand, I've seen, like felt his presence, like all these things are very specific dreams. If you've had dreams from God, you know, like they're undeniably from him. Um, and these dreams are very specific. They're not like normal dreams. Um, they're from God and he has always shown me pictures of time in various concepts, in various ways. Like for example, the circle, the Maseroth, all these, all, this, all these things. And time is very complex um, for us as humans. And so, you know, in my last video, he was showing me about the time fractal. He's showing me about um, patterns in his word and how, you know, the temple instruments and the the, um, the trumpets line up and all the, like, all these patterns and design this design this is how we can see you know we're not random everything about earth is very finely tuned and so what was the point of all of that it was to show the gospel what does the gospel really mean what does it really mean to repent what does it really mean to have a metanoia it's the humbling what does humbling really even mean and and you just see it rife throughout everything in the bible with you know the dust and the gnats and the vi vineyard and you know in, in Micah in you know, Isaiah and all these prophets, like they, it's just from the beginning to the end, the gospel and, you know, the true, um, profound meaning of the gospel. And so then for this video, the reason why it's kind of like tacking on as a second part, you know, to the last video is because he's having, he wants to show, he wants me to tell you guys who is the gospel for? Who is the gospel for? What does it what does it mean to be man? What does it mean to be humankind? And I know that sounds really simple. You're probably like, well, I've already I already know, like, man, okay, what? You know, we're made in God's image. What does that really mean? And I have some things that I think will blow your mind because they blew my mind. And, you know, if you guys know I talk about Cassie from Faith of Her Fear, um, it blew her mind, it blew my husband's mind. You know, my husband's very smart, like this is really cool information and I, I had to share it. This is why I'm filming this very late video. So let's stay tuned. And so, you know, is this going to be my last video? Uh, you know, are these two my last videos? Um, I think so. I think that he's um, really wrapping everything up into this amazing wrapping paper and bow. So I'm like super excited. Anyway, so it started last night. Um, actually, it was, it was, Yesterday evening, I was talking to Cassie about some stuff he's been showing me. Um, I I actually cherry pick what I share with you guys because there's so much information that I could literally talk for like hours and hours of everything God is showing me personally. And um, 
I try to pick, I don't want to say some is better than the other, but I just try to pick things that I think will make people, what I feel like the Holy Spirit is putting on my heart and also, you know, with that, what I feel like will encourage the body and edify the body and like edify you guys because you guys, you know, write messages and stuff that, and, and emails and texts and everything. Um, people reaching out and saying that they um, feel very encouraged by the things that are being said, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the rapture. But in a way it does, it kind of just shows this, the way God works, the way God speaks and the way he acts and all, all this, you know, the way, the way he communicates with humankind. Okay. So, um, and it's all very biblical, you know, it's just, you have to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Okay. You need to have the Holy Spirit to see the patterns and the connections. It's, it's, it's a much deeper level than just reading it at face value. You're reading it at a deeper level. And we'll, we'll get into that in this video. Um, I'll show you some examples, but, um, so I'm, I'm choosing the things I think will make you guys really excited. And so I was talking with Cassie about, sorry, um, about some science stuff that he was showing me um, with time dilation. And so, you know, the Christian community, they're like, well, biblically, we can see Bereshit prophecy. We can see this 7,000 year timeline with God, you know, with, with God. And so... You know, because of this, the earth, um, the earth is 6,000 years old and we're in the 6,000th year and there's going to be a Sabbath thousand years when Jesus comes to reign. And I, I do agree with this. But then you also have science that says, you know, um, the cosmos is 13.8 billion years old and the um, humans have been alive for a million years and all this stuff. And so, you know, I've really been... Um, ha I have this these theories, you know, that, you know, I'm working on with God. Like, the Holy Spirit shows me a lot of stuff. Um... And, you know, looking at the things that he's taught me, he's confirmed th th um, to me, you know, through the Holy Spirit, all this, it's like a puzzle. He likes to just show me all these things and he likes to, I know that he likes to watch me try to understand what he's saying because that's what it says in the Bible. It says, you know, it's a honor of men to seek out what, you know, the Lord is saying. And so, um, and so I was like, I think, you know, it seems to me that both, um, I'm not going to get too into this because it's a huge rabbit hole, but I think that both are true. Um, and this is because of time dilation. I think that um, time is really, it changes based on the observer. This is something, you know, in science, you can look at um, special relativity with Einstein. Um, from the human perspective, you know, we're traveling very slow. I've talked about the difference between traveling at the speed of light with God. You know, this is something impossible that for, for, um, particles with matter okay so that represents us as men you know with this Higgs field you know that brings mass to the reality that we know you know our our bodies we have mass right and so therefore we're not able to ever reach the speed of light because the faster we would go the more heavy we would be we would go and the more energy we would need and so it would just take an infinite amount of energy I mean what does that sound like this sounds like god this is why I say the photon kind of represents God. Um, it's, a, it's a particle that can essentially almost appears to live forever from our perspective. And it moves at the speed of light, obviously. And it's just this um, incredible limit that we can perceive and yet we can never reach. And that just, it's just, it's giving God, really. And so, um, and so... And so therefore, from like a massive particle, slow, like massive slow particle particles perspective we would appear to be um we would when we look into time and we would look at something that would be more energetic more um um you know strong more powerful um you know moving moving faster we would then um sorry i'm just putting on do not disturb um so we would then it would then appear to be in slow motion which means it's actually faster it, it is an interesting paradox of time dilation and so you know i you know have been going through this like how the early universe would have been this very high energy you know field and that really um is represented by you know this concept of god and, and man being you know one together you know not literally one but walking in you know god walked in the garden with adam and Eve, and so there was this unity and, um, you know, this beauty which was fractured by sin, okay, so it, it really echoes that, and so then if you're looking back into a very energetic, you know, hot um, 
fast, you know, particles were moving much faster time, you know, which is the past, it would appear slow. And so, like, there's a, there's all these th reasons. It's, that's not the only reason, but there's a lot of reasons why it almost seems like if you're a scientist and you're not considering God in the equation, you would just look at our reality and consider that. And you could say, well, yeah, that's, it's relative to us, but is it reality? It could be reality because it's us. It's man. Man is, you know, the paradigm or whatever. But when you add in God into the paradigm, then you're saying, well, what's true reality? And so we've been talking about this with um, spirit, you know, the spiritual realm, the physical realm. You know, when it talks about worshiping and spirit and truth, you know, what is truth? Truth is reality. What is reality? Reality is really the spiritual realm. I've talked about how, you know, the physical realm is 3D, you know, maybe 4D if you want to include space time. And it's very limited. And so therefore it appears to be, you know, does it appear to be a shadow cast of the spiritual realm? So if you guys know philosophy, you can look into Plato's cave. Okay, I, I promise you this will be very, all of this has a rele relevance, okay? If you look at Plato's cave, you see um, the allegory of the cave. You see the shadows cast and you see the people in the cave. You know, look this up if you don't know what I'm talking about. They see the shadows moving around. They think that is reality. And so they say, hey, this is good enough for me and I'm just going to stay in the cave. But then there's, just, you know, some who leave and they say, hey, the the shadows are not everything. They're actually people outside and the light is, is casting the shadow and that's real life. I'm going to go there, you know? And it's kind of like as Christians, many, many people say this physical life is all there is. You know, I'm going to act like an animal. I'm going to follow my animalistic instincts. You know, we have two wills. We have the will, this higher, you know, more divine will. I don't want to say it's divine, but it's literally divine but it's like the gift from god to consider more this is why what sets us apart from animals you know this logic and reasoning and we can you know see god and consider him and want to become more like him and and you know be sanctified how are we sanctified we're sanctified through christ okay or we can obey our lower animalistic will and just you know oh we want to just bang people sorry for my language you know and drink and get be a glutton and do all these, you know, disgusting, like, just feed into this hedonistic, you know, mindset. And so, and so that's kind of somebody who really just pertains to this, well, this cave and this, these shadows are all there is. This is life for me. And then the people who, you know, want to see who God is and we, we want to get to God and we go to God through the bridge, which is Christ Jesus, you know, his, the cross. And then we... This is this is like the person who goes out of the cave and says there's more. There's the greater and the shadow cast is is just a shadow. And that's not reality. We thought it was, but it wasn't. Okay, that's walking in the spirit and that's living by truth. The truth that we are just, you know, this this world is just a test. It's just a shadow of what's to come. Okay, so we know that in the Bible. And so... And so that's why I kind of talk about how the you know the physical realm is a shadow cast of the spiritual. Okay, so so when you add so the point is is then when you understand that this is not all there is and there's more, you add God into the equation and you start saying, you know, yeah, time appears this way to me from my perspective or like humankind from our perspective and it appears like an absolutely massive amount of time, you know, it seems like when we look farther into our past, it appears older and slower and, you know, like all these things, but then you start understanding about, you know, this paradox of time and time dilation and how it could be both is true. It could be that a court, like what is the reality, right? The reality is the heavenly. And so according to heaven's time, that would be reality as Christians, we would, you know, perceive that, you know, the world would say that's stupid. But we see that there's more where the people who leave the cave, per se, and we then um, will, you know, we can see, you know, we can perceive like through the word, you know, is it that the heavenly time is 6,000 years old? And this was something I was talking about with Cassie, you know, she was telling me about how she had a dream um, where she saw two clocks, two, it was two circles upon each other, and one, the top one was heaven, the, the bottom one was earth, and it was showing the time, okay, and she said, basically, she saw the heavenly time was going slower, which is very fascinating to me, because you would almost kind of think, like, heaven, as a Christian, you'd just be like, oh, well, heaven would be faster, because, um, 
you know, God's the beginning and the end, you know, he knows the beginning from the end, so it's almost like everything's happened in heaven, now it just has to happen on earth type of, like, has to be fulfilled on earth. It almost appears that way, but then why would, you know, Cassie's a very honest woman, you know, she's a woman of God, and so she's very, she's gonna say how, what she really saw, and she said she saw heaven slower, and she didn't understand what it meant, but now with this whole, you know, time dilation thing, it's like, it makes so much sense that heaven is slower, because heaven is fast, like, pertaining to this um, paradigm that we've been, I've been talking about on this channel and what I'm talking about now, you know, heaven would be going at the speed of light, like, like a photon, right? Not literally traveling, but you can think about it like vibrating or moving or just full of life, you know, at this high, high energy state. Um, that's what life really is, just full of life. You know, people talk about when they die, they, um, they have a heart attack in, in the hospital, they have a near-death experience, they go to heaven, they say, like I've talked about before, they really talk about a lot of things that look like the aberration of light, which happens when you travel at the speed of light. Um, like the Doppler effect. You can look that up if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so they will report like very bright colors and they're able to see through things and the perspective changes. And I can really go down a whole thing of that. It's really cool. I, I can't right now, but I don't know if I will. But <laughs> it's... it's it's stuff we're all gonna learn in heaven anyways, okay, so, um, so don't fret, so, um, <laughs> and, sorry, um, and so, you know, and then people say, um, that everything is just so alive there, even the grass is alive, even the trees are alive, everything's so alive, and so, when you think of life, you think of energy, and light, and, which are all things of God, and they're not God, they're things of God, and, um, and so therefore, according to time dilation, it actually would appear to us being slow um, station. It would appear slow. It would appear st almost stationary. And so this is this is the paradox and this actually matches her dream. So we were talking about these things um, and, and she was talking about how is very interesting at the same time as God has been showing me all this we haven't been talking we don't always talk about our revelations at the moment we talk about them after and so at the same time God was showing her stuff about birth and how um it almost like ha the difference between heavenly birth and earthly birth and how earthly birth is like a set time heavenly birth is a set time and it's it's kind of showing this slower like in heaven it's showing the slower timeline you know and she he's showing he's speaking in her language He's speaking to me in my language, you know, science and stuff, and so, it, but it's the same concept, and it was really cool to see that, and, and we've touched on, we've touched on this in my channel with this whole, like, what is time really, you know, this time fractal, this time, um, you know, the time, perspective of time from God and the perspective, you know, to man, and then she said to me, well, I think you're going to have a dream tonight from God, and I was like, you know, I'm very skeptical, so I was like, oh, like, why would I have a dream from God? And I, didn't, I haven't had one for, like, quite a long time. And not, like, a very profound one. She said, you're going to have a profound dream. And I was like, okay. And we kind of laughed about it. And then I went to sleep. And I had a dream, a very, very profound dream. And I woke up, and I was smiling. I literally was smiling as I'm waking up, which does never happen. It never happens. And I was, I felt so peaceful and just... I felt so good and happy, just uh, like never, I, I li the last time I felt like that was when I had my rapture dream. And so let me read to you my dream and then I'm gonna tell you what it is and please don't get scared off by what it sounds like at first because it sounds really random and weird, but it actually, it's gonna make you guys so excited. And if you're not excited by this, like, when I'm done with this video, I promise it's, it's very encouraging. It sounds so, so random, but it's good. And everyone I've told so far has been very encouraged by this, so. So, this dream yeah, happened last night. I woke up at exactly 3, and so, if you guys know, like, that t time really does matter. Um, 3 is always when, whenever I used to, I don't have really anymore... But whenever I used to have, like, very demonic dreams, you know, a few years, like, maybe seven years ago was quite a lot. Because that was when I was really changing, like, in a more significant way. It always happened starting at 3. Okay, 3, like, 3.15 is when it really started. 
every time. And so it's almost like God was like giving me his dream. So I wake up at three, like with this profound peace, you know, it's just like showing his beauty and his perfection. Like he is greater. Like that's what I just felt from that. And so I wrote, and it sounds so weird. Please just bear with me. I wrote the, fr this is what I wrote when I first woke up. The fractal of life interper- uh, but just before I finish, people get so, they hear key, key words of new age and they freak out and they're like, oh my gosh, this new age is horrible. This is, this can't be from G. New age is a counterfeit. You cannot have a counterfeit without the original. Okay. I claim Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh. Okay. He, he died on the cross. He bled for our sins. His blood atones for our sins and he was buried and he raised again on the third day. He's Jesus Christ, he's the Messiah, he's God in the flesh, okay? I don't listen to any spirits talking to me that are not Jesus, okay? Like, I am telling you, okay? There is, this is not new age for people who are afraid, and it is a fear, okay? If you're so obsessed, it is a fear. Okay? I'm very, very careful with the things I speak, and I know I'm going to answer for every single word that I say to you guys in front of God. I just want to make that clear for people who are, like, are very afraid of like anything sounding too new agey. Okay? It's, a, it's, a, it's a fake of an authentic thing. Everything that is authentic points to Christ. It's from Christ, it's for Christ, and it points to Christ. And this will point you to Christ, I promise you. Okay, so remember my last video was about a f a time fractals, okay? Time fractals. Please watch that. It is, it is pertaining to this video, so it's very important. You should watch that first. Okay. The, t the fractal of life, interpersonal interest and energy flow, okay? Again, just wait. It's not new age. Attraction between humans and points of interest. You know, like humankind observing seeking the adventure you know the zest for life you know um how as uh, how as you go from big to minuscule okay it's a repeating pattern of flow a trickling down of life but not diminished so even if it gets smaller it's still life okay nothing stops it Okay, nothing makes it weakened. An example of microorganisms living away from our eye and yet so alive. Okay, God is so detailed down to this tiniest little microorganism. Transfer of energy flow from one kind. Okay, so remember he made them after their own kind. We got humankind, we got amphibians, we got, um, you know... <laughs> I'm, I'm blanking. Um, mammals, you know, there's all types of kinds, okay? And so there's no crossing. This is why evolution is ridiculous. It's not one, and then they all came from one, okay? God made many different kinds, and, you know, there's stuff like survival of the fittest, and, you know, each kind can kind of branch out on their own little kinds, but we don't have the one point where every single organism came from, okay? So... Um, an example of microorganisms living away from our eyes and yet so alive. Transfer of energy flow from one kind to another, which equals harmony. Okay? And so that's what I wrote. And then I was like, this is my thoughts on it. This was the... So what I just said was what the Holy Spirit was giving to me. All right? Then my thoughts, you know, followed and I said... I guess what life is one big fractal, not sure the meaning, but I literally woke up with a big smile on my face and felt peace, okay? Now, I know that sounds so weird, okay? But let me explain the dream, what I saw, okay? And again, it's gonna sound weird, but I'm telling you this, just, this makes so much sense, okay? It's gonna be mind blowing. I saw a giant leaf and it was very vibrant. I've never seen color so vibrant. It was, it was so beautiful. Um, it was like just glowing with this life and this light. It was almost like this glow of light coming from it. And I saw on the left side of the leaf, there was 
humans, like a group of humans, and they're all just harmonious and happy, and they're tiny. They're like sit, like sitting on the leaf. And then on the other side, there was like a bunch of microorganisms. Like if you guys know the uh, microcosmos, like I'm very, very interested in the microcosmos. I like watching videos of, um, of them, of like single celled um, organisms and multicellular organisms. And they're very, very tiny, obviously way tinier than a human. And yet they were like the same size on the leaf. And I just knew if you guys understand when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, like he speaks to you, like, and just, he gives you knowing, but it's from him. It's not your knowing. Okay. It just, this, you know, comes to you. It's like he's speaking and he was showing me that there was like, almost like, again, it sounds new age. It's not okay. There's a transfer of energy from the humans to the microorganisms. It's like, think about, about it like electricity flowing, okay? It's, there's no stopping it. It's not becoming static where it doesn't have anywhere to go. It's this beautiful flow of life. It was life flowing, okay? From one kind, of the, aka like in the dream, it was the humans to these microorganisms and, and just around and it just keeps going and there, it was just showing me the harmony essentially it's like the complete utter opposite of strife and war and and bickering and just you know and it was so peaceful it was like the true true peace that you've never experienced on this in this life and 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 a great example is if you know your soulmate and it, even a friend who you're so like, this is your kindred, kindred spirit, okay? And I've had dreams of heaven, rarely, but every single time I have a dream of heaven, it's always about people, like groups of people being together and kindred, being kindred with them, being just soul to soul, okay? And there's no misunderstanding, there's no communication issues, nothing like that, just flowing of love between two people. And you can call that energy. And I'm not saying, oh, the energy is God. Like, that's new age, okay? Saying the energy is God. No, Yahweh is God, okay? He created energy and energy. There's, there's, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of imagery there. And there's a lot of allegory. And literally also it's energy. Like, I mean, you can turn your light on. I turn my light on. <laughs> it causes my light to turn on, okay? Um, and energy also causes me to be able to wake up and talk to you guys, like, okay? And so energy is real and it's just showing that a great example is, I know this is really a little TMI, but I've watched um, many, many testimonies, many near, near death experiences, you know, always about Jesus, seeing Jesus, you know, um, becoming Christian, you know, from being atheist or Muslim or etc. And so I've seen somebody say, you know, hey, like, I've heard people say like in heaven, do people poo poo, you know, <laughs> and he was saying, no, they don't. And he said the reason why is because there's no waste in heaven. There's no waste. And so nothing is made void. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is just useless. Everything is full of life. And and everything is for God's glory. And it's all good. This is, this is what good really means. This is why you can also think about the imagery of Mars. It's a very, you know, it's the, the reprobate planet. It's the hard heart. It's the um, antichrist star, you know, whatever you want to call it. And it's just arid, dry. There's no life on it. It's just, there's no water. It's just, you know, the, you can see what I'm kind of, you know, this this um, juxtaposition, juxtaposition of the two, which will help you understand. And so, so anyway, so when I had woken up from this dream, I was like, like, I was like, what? Like, is this supposed to mean? And what is the purpose of this? Like, why am I, why, why is he t like saying this to me? Like, this is from God. Like, I know I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. Like, what is this dream about? And so I'm sitting there in the middle of the night, like I'm mulling over it. I'm like, there's something here. The Holy Spirit's like here. And he's, it's been quite a while since he's like really like laying something on me. And, and so and so anyway, so I'm getting, uh, so my, sorry, my baby might cry in the background. He's trying to sleep train him right now. My, yeah. And so I'm, so I'm mulling over it and I'm thinking about all the time stuff that I was talking about. 
And I'm like, in creation, in the story of creation, I remember the earth was first and then man. And then after, obviously after man, you know, after Adam and Eve, then sin later. And so I've been talking about how there was this grand unified symmetry with all the forces of nature. I've, I've talked about talked about that on this channel and how um, this represents the gospel. I, I briefly touched on it in like I think a few, maybe four videos ago-ish around there. And and I was talking about how you can see like in quantum physics, physics, you can see the four forces of nature were like unified and then they kind of like broke the symmetry. And, you know, after this, then the Higgs field came into play and like mass and all this, all this other stuff after. And so I was like, there's a disjointing of the time because if you guys if you guys know um, astronomy okay not astrology astronomy the study of the science of the cosmos that we can observe um, you know that quite a long time after that is when um, the stars and the planets began to form okay so if you see this symmetry breaking, which almost represents this sin, like coming into the world and this um, Higgs field, which I've talked about, like come into the world and the separation between photons and um, mass particles, right? Which I've talked about, which represents man, you know, man and God kind of being separated. Then how come, how come if it can represent sin, um, you know, earth hadn't even, been created and you know man hasn't even been created and all this stuff so you know there's it's kind of like there's a skip there and so I was contemplating this like I again this is the Holy Spirit like why am I even going there in the middle of the night you know it just it was coming into my mind and so you know I started looking it up this the seven um, days of creation and I saw that it goes in the order of you know the the, the earth being there then it goes, um, you get the water, you get, sorry, you get the light, you get the water, you get the trees and plants, and then you get the heavens, which is interestingly in the middle. Okay, we'll talk about that later. And then you get um, life, which is the animals and um, man, right? And so that's kind of like, I'm just, the, that's the overarching, you know, kind of fashion of it. And so I was like, you know, it seemed arbitrary to me at first. Like, not, it's not that it, feel, it seemed arbitrary in the sense of like, what, you know, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Like, it's more like I didn't see any answer there. I thought, I'm like, well, how does this relate to everything he's been showing me about like the, the beginning, like at the beginning when the universe was created, right? And so then I went to, sorry guys, I'm really tired, so my eyes are tired. I went to um, Bear Sheet, okay? Genesis 1 1 where it talks about in the beginning okay and this is again please if you're you got to you gotta let the Holy Spirit show you what I'm talking about because this is again this is gonna sound weird but I I promise you when I bring this all together it's gonna be like wow okay that's why you gotta rely on the Holy Spirit to teach you these things because God likes to wow people, but you got to get over the hump, right? Anyway, okay. So, okay, I got to stand because my body's so tired. Um, and this chair is kind of uncomfortable. But, okay, so it says, um, in the beginning, God created the heavens, heavens and the earth. Okay, so the earth was formless. Um, let me just read it. Okay, so I'm just on Strong's and I'm going to look at the um, Hebrew parallel, okay? It says, and the earth was formless and void. Okay, so it's really interesting to me because if you look up the word void, it really, it's, it's literally like waste, okay, emptiness, stones of emptiness, which is interesting because we were talking about the reprobate heart and the stone, you know, this, this stone of waste, you know, the heart that becomes stone, which is waste. It's like a waste of a soul. You can think about it like that. It talks, it, it's really talking about um, stones, not for building, but for just being destroyed, like destroying this destruction. Okay. And again, we, so I'll get into this a little bit, but the Lord has been showing me a lot about stones ever since the whole dust stuff. Um, <clears throat> and what does stone really mean? I mean, some really cool stuff, um, but it's ruin, emptiness, void. And so you really are thinking about like, you, if you look out on the cosmos, 
you know, you can see um, there's no planet with life. There's no, um, there's just like arid planets or planets without even a surface. And it's just, it's just lifeless out there. And then you look at Earth and you see this beautiful blue marble where it's like just almost, you know, um, um, astronauts have said they've, you know, been on the space station and they look back at the earth and they say it's almost like it's breathing it's just so beautiful we can't appreciate it because we're like living on earth and yet you know you look at it from outside and you're like it's this beautiful like nest and this arc of life and so this is like the antithesis of that okay and so it was void and darkness was over the face of the deep okay and so this is really talking about waters okay and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And I'm telling you this, I have Holy Spirit chills, and this is going to sound so wild, but I'm telling you this is the Holy Spirit. I literally got a picture, when I read this, I got, I was lying there, I got a picture of, and this is going to sound crazy, especially because I'm a woman, <laughs> a young woman on YouTube saying this. I, I'm telling you this is the Holy Spirit. I literally got a picture of a human egg, and... The male, the sperm, okay, am I allowed to say that on YouTube? The sperm. And I just got a picture of conception. And I was like, why is this the conception? Like, because the Holy Spirit, like, I was like, the, you know, this Holy Spirit, like, put this in my, <laughs> you know, like, put this on my mind. And I was, you know, I was, like, kind of really blown away by this and shocked and confused <laughs> and so then I was like well okay what about the human egg you know if if it's, it seems to be pointing out the waters you know he's hovering over the waters and it, and here's the thing I then clicked on hovering because I was like I'm telling you the Holy Spirit is like he's leading me he's leading me okay I look at the the word and it's um ra cough sorry I don't know Hebrew that well, the pronunciation, but it means to grow soft, to relax. And it also means um, to cherish, to move gently, to, br to brood. I saw the word brood and I was like, this is giving me the picture of a mother, like a mother hen almost over her egg, you know? And again, you get the egg with the, the conception, right? With the human conception. And, and it's just, it's like, you, when you see it, you see, you, you see the Spirit of God is hovering over the, the waters. You almost think of it like he's just there, like over the waters, like he's about to create the world. And it almost feels like emotionless if you, if you don't really look into it, okay? But then you, you see the word that's used is it's just this loving, like he's not, he's brooding over it. It's like the intellect that's the gift from God to man like obviously god has it okay we are have a subversion you know like a, a um a lacking version of that but the, his intellect is so grand i mean he's so grand and so detailed and so his intel it's almost like his intellect is filled with the thoughts of the, his cherished you know this cherished thing which is the earth and so he's hovering over it hovering over it like relaxed and just loving and just this joy and peace over something special and he's just his the, he's brooding so his thoughts are on it and and this is the picture of the mother hen on the egg like it's hers precious thing that she protects and she, any enemy that comes like she's gonna like you know peck at them and and so here's the thing is I didn't actually know this until like literally like three hours ago I have like proof of this it actually also means fertilizing, okay? And you can look this up. The, the Strong's number is 7363. Okay, it literally means fertilizing. And I did not see that because you have to scroll down. And I was like, this is after the next morning. He's already shown me like what, he'll, what I'm about to tell you. And I'm telling you, it's going to be good, okay? So just um, let me keep going. And so, so, yeah, so the Holy Spirit gave me this picture of this human egg and a sperm, honestly, okay? And the sperm, like, works so, like, guys, it's actually really beautiful. Don't let, like, the perverse world, like, let it be corrupt. It's actually a very beautiful thing, conception. You know, the sperm, like, works so hard to, like, get there against all odds. It gets to the egg, and then this conception happens, okay? It's, it's just a miracle. 
every single baby, like 8 million people, 8 billion people in the world, every single one's a miracle. And that's why we know life is at conception. And so, and there'll be more reasons why at the end of this video. And so, so then I was looking at the human egg and I don't know any of this. And the human egg is mostly made of water. It's 70 to 80% water. And so you get this picture of the water again. And what happened is, what's the first thing that happened in Bereshit? In the beginning, it's let there be light. And so what happens during conception when the you know, sperm finally, you know, the, the egg receives the sperm? There is something called a zinc spark. And it's when this amazing light just, you know, it's all like around the egg and it's just, it just bursts into light. And so I've actually seen videos of it and these, you know, professors who, you know, they're not Christian, they're just studying these things. They talk about how it looks like, almost like the sun. It really looks like the sun and, and we get back to that imagery with the sun, the radiation, you know, this represents the Shekinah glory of God, this represents, you know, you know the, the radiation is also water, you know, just like how I was talking about how lapis lazuli, even in Hebrew, is akin to saying um, the stone, you know, the law, right? And so it looks like the sun and and so zinc too, if you guys know, like if, you, if you're a woman with like zinc deficiency, you know, zinc deficiency can really cause, um, like, trouble conceiving. And so having this very energetic zinc spark is also a sign of, um, of, like, this reproductive health in a way, like having a healthy egg and everything. And so I just think it's so interesting. You, know, you, can, you know, you can think of the, the Old Testament with Leah, and so she's given all these boys, and she's, she's hated by her husband, and God had, you know, mercy, and, you know, pitied her, and, and cared for her, and so gave her an abundance of boys, and so what did she say when her boys were born? And she's saying, like, the Lord has given me another child, you know, the Lord has blessed my womb, and my womb is fruitful, and all this stuff, and then you see with, you know, David, you know, God, it was his, um, it was, not his permission, but he was the one who was able to, or he was allowed to, it was still just, he took away David's child because that was the child born out of like very severe sin, you know? And so, and you can think of like the virgin, you know, conception. I mean, when God chooses, it is, you know, this fruitful womb. And when God takes away, it is. And so that's really represented by the zinc too, which is interesting. And so you really got this imagery of let there be light, you know, God speak, like be hovering over the waters, hovering over almost like the mother over the, the hen or the, you know, sperm over the egg. And then this light just bursts forth and this light really, so it, what happens in the, in the human egg is that this egg is actually dormant. It's a dormant cell just waiting to be, you know, you know, inseminated. And so this process when the sperm, you know, meets, it just creates this rapid change and the egg, this life bursts forth. I mean, it, it starts to um, become these cells which like are rapidly multiplying and it's, um, it's just like a flower blooming times a million. And I just thought it's so funny because the scientist who, you know, was really talking about his studies on the zinc um, spark, he was saying, he described it as, um, you know, these stars kind of bursting forth into into galaxies, and he's talking about this the spark of love that really causes this like catalyst of change and like rapid change and expansion, you know, of life. And it's just th these are all things that he's been talking to us about. He's been talking to us about, and and I'll get into it in a second. Because I'm gonna, I want to finish this mirror, like imagery of the two, but you know, so so then what happens is, you know, you get these cells that are multiplying, and 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 you can even go even closer and see like the, this imagery of molecules becoming proteins, and you know, proteins becoming cells, and it's just this becoming this human life and this fetus that you know expands, and then you get. Um, you know, you can think of like, okay, so actually I'll wait on that. So, so <laughs> that, um, 
that made me realize that that is why God created the waters and the heavens and the plants first and then the life. And so it almost represents the building blocks of life to us, which is, you know, we, we live off of the land. We live off of the land. Even um, God cursed when he cursed the man. That's what he, like his curse was to work the land, to eat and to live. And so that almost represents this molecule and man and animals represents almost like the proteins. And so you get that. So I was like, so why is it in this order? That's why. And, and you have the heavens right in the middle. It's almost like the bridge between the two. And because that's, as we know, with the Maseroth, like that's how God um, speaks to man. Like he, we look at, at the heavens and we consider who God is. Like that's what the purpose of the heavens are. Like he's showing his grand majesty like to man in a, in a way we can perceive, right? And so with the waters, you know, I was watching the show and I really recommend it by Jordan Peterson. And... There was a guy, so it's called Exodus, and there's this guy, he has a panel of guys who come in and talk about, you know, from various backgrounds, and there's this guy on it who's, like, kind of talking about similar stuff that I'm talking about, like, there's more, like, um, mis like these mysteries that God is revealing and having people, like, this, almost like how we know the Bible is very hyperlinked, and, and there's so many um, connections you know, all throughout the Bible that it takes like another layer of understanding, you know, and then another layer, another layer. It's not, you can't just read the Bible and be like, oh, it says that literally, so that's what it is. So you, you go into these deeper levels of understanding and it's, it's, it just shows the profoundness of God, okay? So he's talking about these sort of themes and, and so he's talking about Exodus. He made this amazing point where he's like, Moses is really a picture of bringing the waters back together because remember at the beginning the waters were separated and so it's it's again this representation i've never heard anyone else say this beside me but it's the representation of god and like man being separated and there's this this constant you know there's this problem of sin there's a um, there's a forever separation until christ comes and brings it back together through the cross but moses is a shadow type of christ and so he was this is why there's so much um water imagery with him like the water is being separated and how he's um the baby floating amongst the water and so it's really exodus is really in general especially you know with moses but in general a picture of god bringing man and god back together like the bringing the waters back together so he, he made this really amazing point and i'm like that is also intrinsic in what i'm talking about this mirror imagery between in the beginning Bereshit and also you know the human conception because you have the baby you know being born from the lower waters which is the egg and 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 you have the upper waters which is the heavens or the um amniotic fluid and so this baby is being born from the lower waters and developing and then there's there is the separation and 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 you can think about it too is like it is a separation from the baby and the mother. I mean, this is a very trauma, like probably trauma, if babies were able to have memories, like it's pretty traumatizing to just suddenly be all warm and cozy and in this perfect, you know, um, you know, temperature and like you hear your mommy's voice and all of a sudden, boom, you're out in the, in like the real world and there's cre screaming and crying and when do they calm down? They calm down when the mommy's next to them. So it's a kind of, a, it is that this disjointing separation and then you know as you know with bare sheet with the beginning creation happened um you know you had adam and eve you had this development of the the man of the lower waters which is earth you know developing from this formless and void water planet to you know man living and then sinning and then you know the the upper waters god and man are, become separate due to that. So it is that mirror parallel. It's really a fractal too, because as we know, this egg and sperm situation is very, very tiny. It's like, we're talking about cells, molecules, atoms, like very, very tiny scale. And then you get the bigger scale with that. And so why is this all important? Why is the Holy Spirit showing me all this? Um, if you're sticking with me this long, God bless you. Like <laughs> you're, you're very interested in this stuff as well as me. And so then I was like, well, 
the, the man's intellect is the ability to perceive and to you know record and analyze and understand and this is the gift that we have away from animals you know this sets us apart and makes us in the image of God because God you know has this intellect that I'm talking about this gift and so you know how do you measure intellect you can think about it like this you know you measure it by pattern recognition and that's how you can tell if somebody you know is able to logically think they are able to recognize patterns so you can see this on like IQ tests and stuff and this is just a great picture of understanding when people say oh you cannot prove God exists I always say you can get pretty dang close because you can show the pattern and show the logical conclusion that if this pattern exists then God must exist like God must exist okay and so then you can prove it and that's essentially what like so many science sciences and like things like that are so don't let atheists say that to you but um and so then you take this pattern of conception and in the beginning bear sheet with the earth and you then apply it to the cosmos and so this is what he was showing me it's almost like a russian nesting doll okay when you have this big concept and smaller and smaller and smaller it keeps going smaller until you get to very small levels and very large you have very large levels and very small levels and so then you would look at the early universe um, and you see the same concept echoed well it's really the other way around but you know it's like a ripple and you see at the beginning there was a very great expansion um, and so there was just a huge amount of energy amount of huge amount of light okay you can this is why we can see things like cosmic background radiation uh, microwave background and this is the afterglow of the Big Bang you can call it the Big Bang it's not the Big Bang guys um, and I really do think that this is <laughs> This, what they perceive, what they call the Big Bang, which is really just a, a very rapid expansion, is reality, okay? And this, this is, this is, this is why in the beginning when God formed Earth, it's still, it's still, like, it's still, both are true. Okay, it's just like the time, with the time dilation, we can look back and we say it looks like millions and billions of years but if you understand it in reality, which is heaven, like I've been talking about at the beginning, you can, it's, it's really so fast, okay? And if you, again, don't understand what I'm talking about, look at time dilation. It's, if something appears very slow and long, you know, it's not actually slow. It's actually very fast. It's just, the, that's the perception. So again, you know, you can go back to the beginning of the video if, you're, if you've gotten lost on that. And so this is why both can be true. And then with the, you know, the Big Bang, you know, and the creation bear sheet in the Bible, both can be true, okay? It's not, it's not that one can, is, has to be true and the other one is not. It, it's, okay, so I, I don't want to get into the argument, but anyway. And so at the beginning, there was this very rapid expansion. Um, it, this lines up with everything that God has shown me. Um, it would have been a very, very hot, very bright, very energetic uh, universe everywhere um, this really represents what I've been talking about with um, God and man together how they should have been in the beginning because you know this is again getting into quantum physics but you can look into um, when uh, the atomic nucleus was one you know coupled together with photons you know photons again represent God that's what the Holy Spirit showed me um, and the, the nucleus really represents man, Adam, the Adam <laughs> represents Adam, you know, man. And, um, and so they were one, they were coupled together. And this is because there was just, I'm trying to explain this <laughs> a little simply. Okay. There's, just, this is why there was like so much energy and it was beautiful and full of life. And then it cooled down and the, these this um atom nucleus and the photon were decoupled and and so then you again you have this imagery of like you you have this imagery of sorry guys i'm distracted by my baby crying in the distance so um he really needs to learn how to sleep without mommy um <laughs> 
sorry. Um, so there was a de the decoupling of photons and um, the atom, okay, which represents man and God by allegory, okay? And then the universe cooled down and um, this is why you can see the afterglow of the beginning, like let there be light, this afterglow. And, um, and there's also something really interesting called bow, okay? It's called baryon acoustic oscillation. Sounds really complicated, but basically, um, I, I really recommend for you to look this up, maybe on YouTube or something. But basically, this is, you know, what I perceive as being when God spoke, you know, the world, and you can see the sound waves propagating throughout matter. Because sound waves, they don't just travel, um, they actually travel through the matter itself. They um, contract and expand the matter. And so these bow, they're called bow, they are not actually sound, but they're, um, they propagate through, they, they propagated through the matter in the same way that sound does. And they're very, very massive. They're actually growing even more massive. And so something so massive makes me almost think of like God speaking. And very interestingly, they're actually, um, they're actually created by radiation, which again is a picture of, you know, God. Um, it's a picture it's a picture of God, it's a picture of, um, it's a picture of, because it's radiation, remember we talked about how radiation really represents the law, you know, we talked about how the sun, um, which emits a lot of radiation, you know, we're protected from it with the magnetic field, you know, the magnetic field really represents Jesus, when we don't have Jesus, when we don't have the magnetic field, what happens, you become like Mars, you become like the reprobate planet, you get ionized, you get destroyed and broken apart by the radiation. And so, um, and so it's, it's really a representation of God. Expo so what is the law? The, God, the law is meant to just expose the man's heart. Okay, so it shows you, do you have the shelter of Christ on your heart? Like has, heart, uh, has Christ um, transformed your heart or has, you know, have you decided, you know, I don't, you know, shake my fist to Christ and therefore I have a heart of stone and therefore when God's presence comes, it's not that he's like, hey, I'm going to torture you. It's simply that his presence comes and or you come into his presence and you don't have Christ the umbrella on your heart and your heart is exposed, you know, through his God's presence and you're destroyed because there's no, there's no Christ there. And so in the same way, like the magnetic field protects us, like, um, everything, like I've told you guys with the visible light spectrum, everything underneath is, um, protecting, yeah, not protecting, sorry. Everything underneath is non-ionizing and everything above is like gamma rays. It's very destructive in the same way, you know, when we don't have Christ, you know, you get, you, hopefully you get that allegory. And so... It's very interesting to me that these um, these bow are propagated by radiation, and it's so as we can see, we can, we're going back to Genesis sixteen, where we see God really perceives, um, you know, the speaking and and this the, which is the will like manifest into real life and like matter because it goes through the matter, right? It's it's the same as. It's, it's as good as a contract to him. This is why when he speaks, like it is. He doesn't go back on his word. And so the word is like, the speaking is like the writing in stone. And that's why, um, you know, it's a, it, this is why I was talking about in my last video. I talked about stone. I talked about um, when God writes in the stone, it's holy. When man writes in the stone, it's corrupt. And so when God writes in the stone, he's like, He's, it's the same as him speaking. It's the same as him speaking. And this is why the great example is, you know, with Abraham, he, you know, Sarah told him, hey, do this and this. And he said, okay. And if you actually look into the Hebrew words, it really means that he can see, like he, she spoke it and he resonated with her. Okay. And you can say, oh, resonating sounds new age. No, it isn't. Resonating is like a real like phenomena that really happens like all around us. Oh, my husband went into the garage and so um it's below me and so it's a real thing that happens in real life and so um and so it, it showed that then when sarah was upset after um then you know it, it was it was a moot point because she's the one who said it and abraham was simply agreeing with her and 
you know, this agreement came into place and was written in stone per se, okay? So, you know, the world says, hey, you know, you have a verbal agreement with someone, um, you know, you need to get that in writing. You know, don't rely on a verbal agreement because that's not legally binding. Well, with God, it is legally binding. If you say something, if you're going to say, you know, this is why it's like if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, I mean, you're like literally proclaiming to be reprobate is really what you're doing. And so you can see this in the early universe. You can see um, these these sound waves are propagated by radiation of all things. And the radiation represents, like I've said, the law. It really represents the law. And the law is the writing in stone. And yet in this, at the same time, it's also the voice of God speaking and creating these bow, okay? And so, so what I'm basically saying is you can see the let there be light. You can see this spoken word, if you want it per se. You can see this um, original symmetry. And when God was walking with man, you know, per se. And then you can see this great separation. And, and so I want to talk about two. So we see this echoing pattern throughout these, you know, from... Um, the cosmic beginning to the earthly beginning to the human beginning and you see um, you can think about the waters being separated so I just really quickly I want to talk about um, what I was talking about in my last video I was talking about um, this plague of dust with the Egyptians and and so it's very interesting because the Egypt the ancient Egyptians believe that the this god Gab small g god gab but he was the god of du the the dust for them and the earth which is you know think about earth you know think about man um they believe that this goddess of the heavens and the god of the earth you know were separated or it's like the earth waters okay they they say like the waters were separated and it made life for this it made space for this life and this life was gab and this is how gab was born okay so this is literally like a like convoluting of this biblical narrative right and so then they say because these waters separated it was very good and life was able to be you know like man was free like he was able to bloom and blossom in the space and so but then when we read the bible like we can see how these waters being separated like it really does represent the separation from god and this is why this guy that i talked about on jordan peterson's show He's saying how Exodus was all about bringing the waters together, okay? Because that's the allegory for man coming back in oneness with God. And so, and so um, it's really weird, you know, and evil how the ancient Egyptians kind of like twist that into being like some positive thing. Like we're free from God. When God separated himself from us, now we're free. It's like almost giving this type of imagery. And so the god, of, the small g god of Gab for them which is the god of dust is so ironic because we talked about dust in the last video and how this really represents this humbling of the man you know from dust you came and dust you'll return and you can also think about the imagery with jesus making mud you know he's he's bringing the dust back with the water right and he's rubbing it on the guy's eyes so that the guy can see right it's this allegory of like spiritual blindness becoming you know seeing through the waters like coming back with man right and I mean, so much, so much stuff I can show, but let me go back to the cosmic, you know, beginning. Um, you can almost get this picture when you see this repeating pattern of conception, you get this picture of, you know, God, like almost birthing, like he's the waters. I mean, he represents the waters. You can think of the Holy Spirit and the washing clean and this pure, this powerful water, you know. And this radiate, like obviously this radiation I've talked about, they're one and the same. You know, God has been talking to us about how the earth is like the ark, and how it's the ark amongst the waters. And again, you know, the ark is akin to the magnetic field. The where the life inside the ark and the waters around the ark is akin to the radiation, which is you know we're protected by through the magnetic field. Okay, which is Christ. So, so. You see God as the waters, the great waters, the true waters, and he's almost like birthing this, um, this universe, right? And it's like, you know, conceived through the spirit of God. You can put it that way, like, right? With the egg and the sperm, you know, even. And it's like the life is 
just like he conceived um, Mary, you know, with the Holy Spirit, it's like the Holy Spirit like bursts forth, like the water from the throne, right? It bursts forth life in the cosmos. And then you get the secondary, you know, version, which is um, then the waters of heavens and the cosmos like birth the earth, which is formless. And it was like, I don't want to say inseminated, but you know, conceived through the Holy Spirit again, like he's hovering above the waters, like brooding. This is his special place where he's going to create man, the pinnacle of his creation. And then, you know, the earth is birthed, you know, the earth is birthed from this, this water again, this separation or this, you could say this conceiving of the earth from the universe. And then you have man and then you have again the imagery, it's a fractal imagery going smaller and smaller. You have man who's, you know, giving birth to this beautiful baby and you have again this like the earth is you know conceiving man and then man conceives the baby I mean it just keeps going and to me you know what does this all really mean if you if you start to realize this like this is my dream this is the 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 juxtaposition between this you know scale this grand scale and this tiny tiny scale and this flow of life and what it was meant to be like before sin because sin stops sin comes in and breaks the flow and it causes causes this schism and it causes this shattering of of beauty and um flow and like i told you guys he's been showing me he shows me everything in circles and spheres and hourglass i mean it's all like the same shape right i've talked about this before and it just represents this um, eternity and this alpha and omega like who God who his character is and you know spheres are perfectly symmetrical and they're just you know it really represents infinity really and and so and so you can see this imagery with this um, you know the sphere the circle this hourglass and and um, and this flow of, you know, energy, like I was talking about how, and energy is life, okay? You can see this flow of life, like how things should be. You see the man going out into the wilderness and he makes himself alive. He works the field like he's, you know, built to do and he sees the animals and he considers them and he names them and he, you know, writes down each kind and he, you know, he studies them and analyzes the world around him and he looks at the cosmos and he studies and draws the cosmos and he wonders who God is and he looks at his creation and he analyzes and thinks and, you know, has this intellect. He's not just like an animal who goes out and follows his animalistic desires. He is this more profound existence to made to worship, you know, God and, and it's, it's like, I'm Native American, and so in Native Americans, they used to believe that nature is what was God, and they like they saw the harmony between man and, and and nature, and said like this is it. And yet, you know, the Bible calls us to not like stop at God and say that's our I'm sorry, not stop at nature and say that's our God, but we look at nature and then we consider God, you know, the greater one. We don't worship the creation; we worship the creator. But you can still see. It's like one truth and five lies. That's why it seems so good to them. But the truth is that there is the beautiful harmony with nature that, you know, God created nature for man to be comfortable and to enjoy these beautiful things. This is why he's like over the, the earth, like brooding and he's ready to create the pinnacle creation, which is man and humankind. And then he creates all these beautiful, like this beautiful variety of life around man for man. Right. And so that's why, you know, I have this dream where it's like you see man in the, the, circ, the true circle of life and the true, like, b beautiful creation. When, when God stepped back and he said, it is good. This is what I felt. I felt in my dream it was so good and it was so pure and perfect and there was no waste and there was no blockage and there's no, you know, like, like fracturing of the true pure beauty of creation and so then you have the scales too and and why does this all matter why does it matter to see well 
when we see the pattern of God echoing throughout all of creation, when we see him from the biggest scale and from the oldest point in all of existence until now, and we see this repeating pattern, we see how the imagery of Christ as the Messiah all throughout, like echoing all throughout history, it's everything that God makes is, is just rippling throughout history, throughout time, throughout existence. And, and when it says two things, one, all of creation you know, screams the name of Yahweh. That's what it really means. It doesn't mean, you know, everything is saying Yahweh, Yahweh. It means that everything has intrinsically encoded into it the story of man, why we're here, where we're going, what's the purpose of life that it's God and the gospel. And it's like the whole story of the Bible, essentially, is encoded into everything over and over and over again, from the tiniest micro scale to this unfathom unfathomably large universe. It's just encoded throughout it. And if that doesn't make you praise his name when it sets in that realization sets in i don't know what does because it really is that all of creation just screams everything who god is everything and the second thing is the second thing is you know when god said he made man in his image he didn't just you know like oh look in the mirror and like you know something that looks similar like just you know making man in his image it's literally like conceiving he's conceiving man like just like the rib i mean we we sort of know this but we can get a, a more and profound picture when we see you know this repeating fractal pattern of this you know with this this fractal pattern and i mean i could just keep going on um I literally, when I had this, so it took actually two hours after the dream for me to like fully understand all this. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit was so strong. And I literally, after I realized this, I got up and I like was on my knees. I, I don't, I do, like, I'm not a proud woman, like literally, but I, um, I'm very like logical. I'm like, is there a reason to get on my knees at this moment? Like type of thinking. I'm sure there are people out there who know what I'm talking about. But I got on my knees, like, it's not a, it's special. And I was, like, mind blown. I was like, Lord, like, you're at, like, what does it mean to be made in the image of, of God? What does it mean to be man? What does it mean to be, for, for all of creation to scream his name? That's what it means. And it's, I'm like, it's just sitting there for all of history and man just can't see it you know and i almost think about it like this like you have all these scientists who are making trying to like fill out the puzzle of what reality is you know this cosmos and this universe and and our lives and and they have bits and chunks and it's all scattered and but they're missing large areas and until you add in god into the puzzle into the formula you're never gonna fill those chunks in and that is the, like that is just so fascinating to me um and so he's given me a little picture of the overall picture and i don't know why but i just hope it's to encourage you guys and because it's encouraging me it's bringing me to praise his name more like more profoundly and to see he's so real, he's so real. And in this, um, in this country where we like are very uber like thinking and analytical about every little thing, you know, about science and science trumps everything. And you know, like it's that type of spirit and mentality here. This is just such a refreshing thing to me. And so I really hope that you guys, re like I hope that you guys were will be encouraged by it. I hope that I made sense. I'm very exhausted. This is late at night and I don't usually film late at night because I'm exhausted. And so I'm sorry for being a mess. I'm sorry if I was stuttering. Um, 
but I, is this going to be my last video? It seems like he's wrapping everything up um, and giving me kind of what is the purpose of it all? It's all for him. It's all for his gospel. It's all for the gift of man. You know, we're all men. We're all, we're all given the, just the gift from birth to accept his gospel and the gift of his redemption through Christ. And this is the most beautiful story that anyone could ever write and it's for us, for men. This beautiful gift, so that's what it's all about. We'll see if he has more to say, but so far I think this is really, this is really it. It seems like this is really it. This is really what he wants me to speak on. And just really quickly, if you're, you know, here to want to, you know, if you want to hear something about, you know, the ninth hour, you're waiting for the rapture. Again, we're not this rapture. Like I've said all the time, this channel is not for um, reading the future. You know, this is not the, the gift that God has given us. He makes us study his plans he tells us things and he makes us seek him out and he knows the the future perfectly he's given us what he wants to give us in the bible um but he gives us little glimpses and so one of those glimpses is the ninth hour like we've been talking about you know and if you know this channel if you follow this videos on this channel you've seen that um i've talked a lot uh, very very extensively about how the full moon is very almost like synonymous with the um, new crescent except it's almost like a hidden version and so like I've talked about you know the rapture is a hidden feast and so is it that we are actually looking from new moon to new moon so I'm every single time the new crescent comes if there's something I'm waiting for I'm always waiting until the full moon because it's like that extension that 15 part extension okay so if you don't know what I'm talking about watch my previous videos I've done extensive stuff on that so if you're waiting please be waiting patiently and understanding and don't give up because 